Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your two favorite panelists, co-hosts, whatever you want to call us, for this week's episode of 4GWQ Presents, a variant podcast. And today, we're going to be talking about Xenoscope Comics. But before I get into that, I'm just going to reintroduce myself. My name is Clowns, and our buddy here, Maverick. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? How you doing? Pretty good. It's been a, it's been a busy week. How about you? absolutely i'm switching from night shift over to day shift and we ain't stopped it's one of the busiest night shifts i've had in a long time it's just like you i just hadn't stopped this this month and this week has been ridiculous i hear that but you know as always let's get into our favorite topics of comics and uh this past week we've been reading up on these uh the xenoscope comics huh yeah i love them i i I think uh, when we first started this, it was you know one I introduced you to. It's one of my favorite you know publishers. Just they're smaller, but their their comics are just fantastic, and they have a good you know good uh sword I'm looking for a good universe around their comics. You can pick one and you can stick with it, or you can jump around and and each one is sort of tied to each other, and it it makes it fun for me. Absolutely, and they were kind enough to send us some review copies. Um, and I'll go ahead and disclose that Robin Hood Outlaw Part 1 of 6, Van Helsing Sword of Heaven 4 of 6, uh, Zodiac, um, and we have some others we're going to review as well, but these are the ones that we're pretty much going to cover in this episode. And uh, this is our first ever, we'll call it informal review. We still haven't figured out our review format. We're, we've done reviews for other sites, other things we've done, but we just want to do something different. We're, we're going to sit around and we're going to talk about these comics, you know, introduce who worked on them, just point out some things we liked about them. You know, we'll always point out some things we didn't like, some things we changed, whatnot. You know, we'll be completely honest with our reviews. Um, but let us know, you know, do you want something different? Do you want scores? Do you want us to focus on art more, writing more, lettering more? I mean, is there something you want us to focus on? You know, this is all, you know, we're learning as well as as you guys are based on how we want to do this. Is there something you, you wish we would touch on that we didn't just let us know in the comments below, you know, Twitter, however you want to get in touch with us. Let us know what you, what you think. Yeah. And uh, all you out there listening, your comic fans as well. So, you know, when you check out your review sites, basically what do you look for or, or which something they discussed that we didn't discuss? Maybe we can add it in something like that. So, yeah, we'll be happy to do that for you guys. We love comics just as much as you do, and we're here to discuss that. And Maverick's going to start off with Zodiac number one. Yeah, Zodiac number one is a part one of three. How best to describe this? Um, you know, you know, going into it, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of you know, death and blood and killing and assassinations in comics. I mean, I love a good gritty comic. I always have. Um, and I, I guess you could – I guess the best way to call him is an assassin. That's the best way I can, I can focus on it. Uh, he's called Zodiac because uh, he, has, he uses like the signs of the Zodiac as part of his powers. You know, He's got his uh, – you know, I don't want to say it wrong uh, – his gauntlets, his twin uh, Zodiac 9mm handguns. Uh, I, I mean let, – let's – I'm trying – okay. Best way to describe it is he has a complete arsenal. His 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 fingers pop out these razor sharp knives, you know his his arms kind of like I don't want to call it I don't want to use assassin blades like Assassin's Creed's but they pop out these nice swords that he's very awesome with these super accurate deadly nine millimeter pistols he's got a crossbow that also doubles as a shotgun which I need that to be a thing in real life so it can go from full course hell to bloody stealth in a matter of seconds uh, I, I love it I love everything about about it. Um, so to start off how we're going to do every comic, I'm going to tell you who worked on it just because I think everyone needs to have their their name mentioned, whether they just did the slightest thing to the major artwork. Uh, writer is Joe Brescia. And also, sorry if we mispronounce your name. It's not anything on purpose. Uh, just going by what I read, and it could be completely wrong. Let us know if we do pronounce it wrong. Uh, artwork is Daniel Main. Colors, Jorge Cortez. Letters by Taylor Esposota. He is of Ghost Glyph Studios. The editor is Christina Barbieri. Art direction and design, Christopher Cody. And the Grim Universe overall was created by Joe Brescia and Ralph Tedesco. Um, there are six covers that are going to be released for this. They've got subscriptions, quarterly, VIP, 
and uh, Xenoscope exclusives. So I went into this completely blind from it. I, I know Zodiac has popped up in like Merlin the Magician, the whole universe, but I've actually stepped away. It, I stepped away from comics for a good bit, probably about a year or two, because you know had got a two year old, so. I still collect them, but as far as reading comics, I stepped away for a while. So I was excited to get back in, into Xenoscope. Uh, pulled it up, and you know, great. What's the best way to put this? I was a little confused at the beginning of the comic. You know, as stepping away, people who have continually read their comics may know more than me. But I completely stepped in, and you know, you're watching the character grab his arsenal. You know, explaining everything, showing you everything he has, and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And then it goes straight into him pulling off assassinations based on a mark that he had, a contract. I was like, okay, I, I'm not sure where he got this from. But you sort of forget about it because the action and the story becomes so cool. You get to see him. You get to see two or three main characters. You get to see the villains of the story. You get to see him jump right into the action. Um, it, you know, I love seeing you, – you, you kind of – all right, let's do this. Out. You see like a Spider-Man comic. You see him. Oh, he'll use web shooters. This this comic, you know, he'll he'll you know use his words. He'll punch and kick. In this comic, he used every single one of the weapons, the tools of his arsenal, right away. He was shooting bad guys. He was slicing throats. He was stabbing. He was pulling out his claws, shotgun, crossbow. I mean, everything, page to page to page. You didn't know how he was going to dispatch the next enemy. And I, I really like that. I, I like that there was such a variety of ways that he could go about combat. You know, if somebody was at a distance, he had ways. If they were close up, he had ways. He had a completely different way to dispatch every single person, every single enemy. And uh, I think you might have skimmed through some of the artwork. I love the artwork. It's, it's, it's bloody. It's dark. It has this, you know, ambiance of mystery. But the artwork is just absolutely phenomenal. And... The story itself has me hooked. I'm ready for the next two parts. I, you know, it ends like every good comic on a nice cliffhanger. He's being drawn down on by a, a large group of enemies, and even though he's this awesome badass, you still just aren't sure how he's going to take care of this. You, I, you know, because this is a new enemy. Like these, there's there's about 15 enemies at the last page about to attack him, and it's enemies that, as far as this comic is concerned, you haven't seen yet. You haven't seen before, so I don't know what powers they may have. I don't know how they're going to attack them, and that's a great way to leave it off because I'm like, oh, oh no, you know what's going to happen next? What, what's what's? How's he going to take care of this? How's he going to get out of this? And you know, you have to wait for the next comic, but it's it's still really good. It it draws you in, and I don't want to give in, give away the entire story. That's that's not how I want to go about you know comics, but you know. It draws you in, it keeps you going panel to panel, page to page, and it's not overburdened by text boxes. It's not overburdened by, you know, you having to go back, okay, what what is this? Who is this character? Go back and forth, which I, I have a tendency to do in comics. If you get a little confused, you end up flipping back and forth. I didn't have to do this with this comic. It kept pace. It was very clean, and the artwork was just absolutely stunning. I, I couldn't take my eye off of it. I mean, each character had great detail. Each fight scene had you looking over every panel going, oh, man, how did he – oh, that's awesome. No way he – and it just kept you going. It kept you entertained. I, I didn't want to put it down, and I I found myself after I finished the comic going back to page one again and slowly just going through each and every detail, which is, is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean there's – as far as artwork is concerned, I mean it, it's, it's stunning. I mean your, your character doesn't look like – he doesn't look like someone that you would just – make up in the back of your mind and be like okay here's my superhero no he, he has he has a lot of detail brought to him he has a lot of things about him that you're like oh man they they thought this out they thought this through i mean everything from the tread on the bottom of his boots is detailed i mean they did an excellent job of this and i'm completely rambling i know that but i, I get super excited when i like something about comics and i love a good detailed comic i love a good bloody comic and this checks all my boxes yeah, and speaking of which, I want to say, you know, for those of you not familiar with Xenoscope, you might find some of the um, messages in the comics or the stories mature. And, you know, that that is, uh, that's their universe. It's it's a very greatly themed universe. And I want to talk about Robin Hood Outlaw, um, part one of six. It was written by Dave Francini and Howard Mackey. Um, 
the story. And the writer on this issue, I guess, is Howard Mackey, artwork, Babasu, Cortis, colors done by Juan Manuel Rodriguez, letters by Taylor Esposito. Uh, you may be familiar with Taylor from Ghost Glow Studios. Editor, Kelly Supley. Hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I pronounced anything wrong. Art direction and design, Christopher Cote. And, of course, Scrim Universe created by Joe Brush and Ralph Tedesco. And I took some notes as I was reading this comic because I actually liked it a lot. It reminds me, nostalgia-wise, of growing up reading comics in the 90s. It has a kind of like a darker theme with the colors, but they still have bright colors that pop as well. And it goes with the mood. I mean, I was looking at some of these scenes. There's even a luminescent, luminescent moon. The shadows were done extremely well. This really ties into the universe of Robin Hood. You can tell that just from this story, even if you haven't read any of the Robin Hoods in the past. Uh, so, for example, this actually points to a 2019 one-shot Robin Hood side job, which I'm going to go back and read now just because of this. And in this issue, there's it starts out, you know, she's coming back from possibly whatever happened in that 2019 one-shot. I didn't read it, so I don't know, and I'm new to Robin Hood. And just the moment that you get into the story, by the second page, there's already action. There's action, like, almost everywhere. And you could tell this is a action comic with some drama involved. Robin Hood is a very honorable character, from what I could tell, moral-wise. And she fights corruption, kind of like uh, some other superheroes out there. But it's done so well. It's not like that she has these superpowers that... You find in other comic books that are outrageous. It's you can relate a little bit more, um, bow and arrow wise, hence the name. And it seems like a lot more skill for the character. So I have a lot of respect for Robin Hood. It does, you know, in this comic, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers. It does feel like there may be a missing scene that I didn't catch uh between pages sixteen and seventeen. I was a little thrown off in the story there. Um, but like I said, I need to go back and read a lot more on this. The classic comicisms done in this comic are done very well. And towards the end of this comic, um, there's an introduction of a new character. It's kind of like a surprise continuation. I didn't expect it to be a character that may be involved in the story. But all I can tell you is that I'm very excited for the next issue and I can't wait to read it. So Now, point this out. This is something we both purposely did he read some comics i read some others we did not read the same ones we did this on purpose to see how a review would go based on us having different opinions us having different thoughts and we chose the ones we wanted to read it wasn't a random we we went through and saw, saw the ones that we purposely thought that we would like the best um so i'm just wanted to point that out there so so it doesn't seem like we're being slack it's something we wanted to try if you would prefer us to go through and read the both comics so we could debate each one of those comics individually we we don't mind doing that we just this is just a thought we had we'll figure we see how it worked as far as your comic was there something it doesn't even have to be story related or art related was there something an addition to it or anything like that that you really enjoyed the reason i ask is i bring up zodiac the last four pages of zodiac go step by step and tell you everything about this character it goes of his left arm his right arm, his guns, his jetpack, his crossbow. And I enjoyed that. And it's good detailed paragraphs about each individual weapon, each individual arm, what what makes him Zodiac, what brings him to life. I absolutely love this. I spent I spent 20 minutes going over each one of these pages, looking at every detail. It tells you, you know, it goes over his name, which, you know, if, if you're interested, it, you know, I can go through all that kind of stuff. I just, I loved how they gave me details of each individual weapon each and i love that I, I love that detail in a comic you know his name is logan patrick o'connell you, you know if anyone's interested in his main story but it gives me all this detail and, and it was it was a really cool reference because after i finish the comic you get to this and then i can go oh oh that's really cool so i can go back and look at the comic and then scroll back down and you know ours is pdf files you, you guys will have the either this or the books but you can flip back through and say okay wait wait Okay, so that's what that is. This is what that gun does. This is, oh, he had the jetpack. Oh, I see this now. You can go back and see cool details that you may have missed the first time you went through. And I, I really enjoyed that addition. It, it made me feel, 
it made me feel more included in the comic. Like, oh man, I see things that, you know, if this wouldn't have been added that I wouldn't have noticed at first. Well, uh, one thing in this comic that I did want to point out is that in the action scenes, the colors in the background really set it apart. So you can tell that there's action going on. It's not just like forward lines or lines direct in a certain direction, but there's bright colors that make it pop out more. So you can tell there's actually something going on. And there is good use of comic action words um, when there's glass breaking and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of well done implementation of showing the actual story that's going on. And I mean, I didn't go back and read any other Robin Hood yet because I'm new to the series, but I'm sure there's a lot more out there because this does tie into a whole universe. Uh, the grim universe created by Joe Brusher and Ralph Tedesca. I'm sure there's a lot more to this character. That's more in depth. That was explained in, you know, past comic books that I need to go back and read. So it, I mean, it's all there, Maverick. I mean, it's, it's very well done. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I love, like you said, there's mature themes. Um, as far as their covers, there's a lot of nudity in their covers, stuff like that. But I absolutely love all the covers they offer for all their Grim Universe titles. You know, that's one thing I was telling you that got me really into it was collecting the the comics, trying to collect the covers. I mean, it's just I, I you know, I mentioned it in one of our first podcasts. Artwork is what really draws me. A cover can sell me on a comic. I, I love collecting comics based on covers. Just you know. You walk through and you see one of their covers, you're instantly hooked like, oh, wait, what's this? What do I got here? And, and it's cool stuff. It's never just the same thing over and over again. Each one is different. I'm, I mean, as far as – like even even with the Zodiac, I mean your main base cover is just the main character Zodiac standing on a rooftop. You know, lightning strike in the background. It's a gorgeous cover. But as far as the, – they're variant covers. You know, they've got Zodiac in the fight with one of the main villains who I'm not going to spoil. They've got another main character – that I'm also not going to spoil is on another cover. It's a, it's a female who, who know has a spiritual relation and you, you could see that on the cover. You know, the next cover is the, is the main villain also not going to spoil, but you know, surrounded in flames and, and that's just gorgeous. And, and there's two other covers, you know, including a blank sketch variant where, you know, if you go to comic cons and stuff like that, you can get someone to do a sketch on, but each one of their covers is just gorgeous and that's what i that's what really drew me to xenoscope at, at the beginning is is i'm a huge fan of covers i'm a huge fan of variant covers i'm a huge fan of being able to collect things like that and each one of their covers you can't go wrong with it even if you just get a base cover you can't go wrong with with the artwork on their covers they are absolutely gorgeous and I, each one of those covers is done by someone different you know the main base cover is ego vitorino and ivan nunez but each one is done by someone different which you know, it is common in comics, but it just shows you the, the vast amount of amazing artists they have at Xenoscope. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I went back and looked at some of the covers as well, and I was surprised because it, it does draw you in. And it, it kind of reminds me, and I don't like to point out similarities a lot, but it reminds me of a lot of the old school Vampirella stuff that kind of drew my uh, family into reading those. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just love their style, their direction. It's ingenious. Um, their covers really, really pop well, especially, you know, let's get into Van Helsen because I read that as well. Have you seen Van Helsen's covers yet? I haven't. No, as I said, I, I avoided the ones you looked at, but now that we're doing reviews, I, I'm going to go back and, you know, take a look at them and read them. Well, if you get a chance, check out some of the Van Helsen stuff. It's really cool. Uh, it's got a really good story background. The character has a lot of potential. It's an amazing character, actually. And this is sort of Heaven 4 of 6. It's uh, the writers Chuck Dixon, editor Christina Barbareri, artwork Julia Sabria, uh, colors Max Flan Arroyo, hope I pronounced that correctly, letters Saida Temafonte, art direction and design Christopher Cody. Um, in the comics of Van Helsing, the art seems to be a little bit of a darker tone. There's not a lot of bright stuff going on, especially in this issue, but it sets the mood for what has happened. And I think that's extremely important in comics because they're not, they're not, you know, physically, verbally telling us a story, but they're telling it through emotions, through colors, through artwork, 
and it all has to come together, and Van Helsing does that very well. After reading the first few pages of this, I can tell you that I'm going to go back and collect all the back issues. I really love this character, because you could tell the character, just from picking up this issue, right, Maverick? I can tell this character fights mythical, mythological creatures within the Grim universe, which is fantastic to me. I love that kind of stuff. I love that. I love mythology. I love mystical stuff. I love supernatural stuff. And this is what Van Helsing's about. So, since you mentioned it and brought it up, I decided to pull it up, take a look at the covers. I mean, the, the base cover is, is gorgeous, but the other three are, are amazing as well. Those are just. I mean, uh, that's what I was saying. Like, I mentioned to you that I just I fell in love with their artwork on the covers. And. You know, you get to page four, and you've got this awesome, looks like a chase scene. I mean, I'm with you. Like, you know, these are things I'm going to go back and, and read. I mean, y- you fall in love with this art, and then the writing hooks you in. The lettering is gorgeous. I mean, you don't get, you know, y- you've seen a comic with bad lettering, and you get kind of, uh, hold on, what, what, what's this word? What am I trying? And, and that doesn't, this doesn't happen there. It's, it's all just gorgeous. Yeah, and that's one thing I want to point out, too, is you mentioned the lettering, and I think that so far from the two issues I've read uh, in the Scream universe, the lettering is what I expect from standard comic lettering, but it's not overbearing. It's not It's not like there's too much crammed in one box or overly done or too many in one scene. It, I mean, it really sets a great pace for the comics. And it's done very well. It, it's it's not overbearing. It doesn't interfere with the pictures. So it, it tells the story that it needs to tell at the same time. So, so let me ask you. We're, we're both a fan of a, like a powerful female main character. You know, we both like the Tomb Raider games, you know, stuff along those lines. And you've got Robin Hood here and you've got Van Helsing. What... What a sets them apart, and two, say we have one of our listeners going in, and they're like, "Okay, I, I want, I want a main female character. Where should they go? How how should they make the decision on, on which comic to pick up?" That's that's a good question to ask. Um, I think you know if you like mythical stuff, if you like supernatural vampires, creatures, uh, monsters, kind of stuff, if you want to go with Van Helsing, because right off the bat, you can tell that. She's the type of character that hunts the stuff down and tries to destroy it, eliminate it, you know, protect protect the universe from uh, those fears and aspects of it. And with Robin Hood, it's more of a character that uh, it so far Robin Hood doesn't feel as supernatural to me. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be honest, I haven't gone back and read to the back ones yet. So just from my perspective, what I read. Robin Hood feels like a character that has a lot of honor, moral value, integrity, honesty, and she appears to be more hands-on with a bow and arrow, um, and her responses and reflexes are very quick, because even in the comics, she stops some arrows from going at people, so the real thing that sets these two apart is vampires on one side, and then your regular bad guys on the other. I could picture Robin Hood, like, taking down, you know, crime bosses, gangs, stuff like that. So that's what I would expect to see more in her stories. Does that make sense? Yeah, so so what? So they're both extremely awesome. What you're looking for is based on what you want the surrounding world to be like, is what you're saying. You know, are you looking for, you know, the, the heroine that, you know, or you looking for, you know, the supernatural, you know, craziness, you know, so it, it, it's you couldn't go wrong either way is what you're saying. Yeah. And I could picture, you know, in the Robin Hood series, if something was to overflow a little bit, like maybe a crime boss got some type of powerful ring or something mythical. I could see Robin Hood taking that down. Um, and this is just pure speculation because I have no clue what's going to happen in the future or what happened in the past. But I could see it drifting a little bit that way. But with Van Helsing, I see more of okay, you're, you know, you're a demon, a vampire, or something undead or unnatural. I'm just going to go right for you. I'm going to take you down. I got you. You know, and that's what's, you know, we're we're a new 
comic podcast. You know, this is episode, what, four, officially four. We've had, you know, interviews and stuff, but this is officially episode four. We're going to be moving into the middle of comic series in the middle of comic publishers. We're going to be stepping into the middle of some of these things. We're not going to be 100% accurate with as far as our thoughts and, you know, past history with some of this stuff, you know, and that that's kind of fun for us. You know, we get to expand our horizons here. You know, we get to see, okay, you know, we're, we're stepping right here in the middle of Xenoscope. What's well, kind of cool though, because now we get to say, okay, wow, uh, I want to go back and, and, and read some more of this. I want to go back and see what this is about. You know, that, that's kind of, that's kind of awesome for me, you know, that I get to learn new things. And as far as these reviews go, I, I get to spend time and see how things are working out and see what I fall in love with all over again. I, I get a chance to fall in love with comics all over again. And that's, that's really awesome. But also for, for the listener, you know, if, if you are huge into some of the comics we end up reviewing or the series or the universes, drop us a line. Say, hey, you guys may need to check out this. Look at this one. We're all for going back and, and finding old comics. We have no problem reviewing older comics. We, we just love comics in general. So I preface that all just to say, you know, if we say anything wrong or we say anything, you're like, eh, no, no, you guys need to check this one out. Let us know. We, we want to learn. that This is fun. Reading comics, going back and learning about comics, this is what's fun for us. So absolutely just let us know if we missed anything. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think Maverick said it best, but for me, I, I'm i a new fan to Zonoscope, right? Not just because they sent us review copies, I'm going to be completely honest. I am looking at this series as a fan. I love the writing. I love the art style. And as a matter of fact, I did go to my local comic shop and I picked up some back issues. So I can't wait to dive into this universe. And coming from Maverick, he's already a fan of Zonoscope. And he was talking about them long before we started this podcast. And he's like, man, cause you got to go back and, and read some of this stuff. It's just amazing. It's going to pull you in. The covers are bright, vibrant. Um, they're just full of colorful life. And he's absolutely correct. I look at this universe as, you know, as uh, if I was going to create something, right? And I was looking at all the other comics in the past that have come out. It's almost like the Grimm universe is the type of universe that you wanted some of these other characters to venture into, but they never did. So you just go out and create your own and it becomes amazing. I mean, this stuff is amazing. It's epic. It's so fulfilling reading these books. Absolutely. And, and you know, the one thing like, you know, we're going to be honest about every review we do. If, if you had to have a negative for the universe overall, it, it's that, you know, I love adult themes. I love blood, you know, the nudity doesn't bother me. I love that kind of thing, but it is going to be a turnoff for a lot of people. Uh, you know, if you're into your classic, you know, spider-mans and your your supermans and the suit this may not be for you it, it may not be i mean if we're gonna be completely honest but if you know adult themes don't bother you or maybe it's something you enjoy you know you enjoy these you know you know the bloodshed and, and comics and, and you know adult themes and it's something you wish more comics had more of this may be a you know a publisher you may need to look into you know i personally enjoy that sort of thing you know i i love my you know Captain America's and going back and having my heroes, you know, defeat evil. But I also kind of like some real stories every now and then where, you know, Zodiac is a, an assassin, but, you know, I, I'm watching him, you know, slice throats, you know, stab his claws in the guts. You know, I kind of like that stuff every now and then, you know, it, it's, it's a good change of pace from your, your basic standard superhero comics, you know, and, and you know, the, if I had to have one negative, it, it may be that it may not be for everyone. So, you know, Go to your local comic store, check them out, see if it's for you. And maybe, like you said, it's a breath of fresh air. At least for me, it is. Yeah, it's it's that the Grim Universe is not afraid to tackle darker themes. And that's why I like it. Whereas mainstream comics or some of these superheroes that we grew up with, they're clean cut and their stories might not delve into something further. Um, if that makes sense for you, a lot of listeners out there. And these, this universe... Is a lot more in depth and detailed, and it sets a darker tone, but at the same time, it feels more real for these characters because the writing is not afraid to go there. 
Um, and that's what I like about it, that they're not afraid to go to those places that some other comics wouldn't dare to go to. And, that, and that's why I like Xenoscope. And I went back and picked up a few back issues, and I plan on uh, continuing to do that, because I like the physical copies in my hand a lot, and I love these comics. Oh, absolutely. And like I told you, that's that's where, that's where I, you know, I may, this is, this is going to sound, how, how do I say this without sounding like narcissistic? I'm a value collector. I like rare things. I like things that are worth worth a good amount. I'm never going to sell my comics. <laughs> I just like saying that I own them. I like having this art. I like having this stuff. You know, and that's how I got hooked on Xenoscope is their art is gorgeous. Their comics are rare. Their covers, you know, just pull pull them up on eBay. It, it, it's, you know, that's what got me hooked to them was, oh my God, look at this art. Look at these covers like I was instantly hooked and that's what got me initially hooked is is the fact that I was like man I, I have to have these and that's before even opening up one of their comics and then once you get it and you open it up it changes everything you're like oh wait a minute I, I need I need to read more of these I need to I need to see I love this character I love the series and that's that's kind of a cool thing because a lot of comics don't have that they don't their covers are just kind of cool I mean hey this is a cool cover but it doesn't draw you in to make you think, okay, you know, you know, like boom, their covers instantly. You're like, I need, I need more of this. I need to see more. I need to experience more. And I, I absolutely just adore everything that about their comics, you know? And I think but, my, I think my comic book uh, guy said it the best. When I went back looking for these back issues, he said to me, he says, man, you're not going to find a lot of them here. And I said, why is that? He said, because the fans are on a scope. They buy this stuff as soon as they find it. He's like, sometimes it's hard to find. And I was really looking for some Robin Hood uh, stuff, like back stuff. And he's like, man, you're just not going to find it right here, right now. It's just, you're better off going on Comixology or seeing if there's digital versions to catch up. It's a little hard to find. I was like, man, this must be really, really good stuff. And it yeah, is. I don't know if you're. I don't know if yours says it, but mine, the the you know the Zodiac cover, it's a subscription subscription exclusive covers limited to seventy five prints, quarterly exclusive two fifty prints, VIP exclusive seventy five prints, and the Zenith scope exclusive fifty prints. They do not print a lot of these comics, which isn't a bad thing. It it, it means that the rarity goes up. It means that it's a collector's item. It means that. If you get your hands on one, do not let it go, and it means to keep track of when they're going to be publishing another one because you're going to want that one. And you know, it's something we should have touched on when we first uh, started these podcasts, first started the reviews. But what do you look for when you are collecting comics? What is it, clowns? That you are? Are you someone who wants to buy issue number one of a series and all of the series? Because I'm not. I'm. I've never been one to sit down and read an entire series. That's why trade paperbacks aren't my thing. You know, they may be 20 comics long and it's like, yeah, you know, I want, I'm an artwork guy. You know, I'm a cover guy. I, I want to own this comic. I want to touch it. I want to open it up and see these, these beautiful, gorgeous images. If, if I have one, five, six, you know, so, there are going to be some stories where I'm like, man, I, I need all of these, but not every comic is like that. Now these ones right here, I love that they're mini series three, six five i had loved that because that's what sort of turns me off to some series is like oh this is number uh 526 did you read did you read 327 to know what's going on no i i didn't you know, that's what that's where they win is because their series are three five six of course they have their overarching ones i'm sure of in the entire universe that that go longer but these mini ones are fantastic for someone like me who doesn't want to collect 500 different ones to know what's going on in this one that he's reading right now I, I i love the fact that i can collect three and have my whole series or or collect five or six and have their that entire run of that comic i, I love these little mini series they have that that's what really turns me on to it well i think it certainly makes it collecting easier you know like um for example the sword of heaven being four of six knowing that there's only six in that series makes it easier to collect that series i i get that um when i go to collect comics what i look for one is definitely the cover i really like covers that pop out and i'm a big fan of uh the cal art style i'm not sure if i explained that pretty well but like the teen titans go i love that kind of style so i go back 
And if I see covers like those, I'll pick them up right away. Uh, any art style similar to that, I'll pick it up. Um, I like collecting number ones of a series to see if I'm going to like the series going forward. To see if it tells me a lot about the character or enough about the universe. So I do try to collect number ones. And that's how I got, <laughs> that's how I got into that, um, that Prime comic that you uh, mocked me for in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Um, and then sometimes uh, when I was big into Todd McFarlane and his style when he first came out and revitalized Spider-Man, um, I went back during that time and, and my comic book collecting phase of collecting all his stuff. Um, and I even started with Spawn number one as well. So... Yeah, I think it's a combination of all that. Number ones, CalArt style, Poppy cartoon styles, um, and the artists a lot. But now I'm starting to notice a lot more when it comes to writers as well. I, I see a theme that a lot of writers do when they continue a series. And I like that. It's that every writer tells a story a little bit differently. Even though they try to tell it in the same universe. So I like some of those similarities for some of my favorite writers, and I'll go back and, and try to get their comics as well. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's not to say I, I don't enjoy writers. I absolutely do. I'm just not the biggest fan of these long, long runs. Yeah, you know, if I I do have my favorite writers, I have my favorite artists, you know, and I'll, I will search those out. But also, if I ever ever make fun of you for owning a comic ever again, don't forget that I own the first issue of the NFL superhero comic. Just don't ever forget that. Then you can make fun of me all you want because oh, I have that as well. Yeah, <laughs> so if I ever make fun of you, just remember that I have that. Yeah, I, I think you know it, it's a lot. That's what a lot of comics are to me is that it's just a lot of fun for me to go back and get this stuff, and it feels good for me to have a first issue of something, and that's something that growing up, my dad used to take me to comic conventions, the comic stores as well, and. He used to be on a hunt for number one, so it kind of it carried on with me, and it, it became a special thing to me to try to go back and get these number ones. Do you have a favorite number one that you own? I want to say my favorite number one would be Spawn 1. I think when that came out, I probably have about 20 copies of it. Um, I got so really? ex- yeah, I got so excited, and it used to be a place called Steve's Comic Relief by me back in Pennsylvania back in the day, and I went there and I bought all the Spawn number ones that he had in at my local Steve's Comic Relief. Yeah, like I said last time, I've never even, I've never even read it, so that's uh, so that's something you have on me. My favorite number one would probably be She Hulk, the first ever She Hulk number one, like the first ever printing, first ever one. I, I love that. I, have I love that, that comic. I have that one also. Yeah, it's a it's an amazing one to get, and uh, you know I've got tons. Like you know I've got the I've got Rom. You know I've got his number one. Yeah, you know, I just I'm I, I'm with you. Number ones make it for me, which which is really cool. A thing about Xenoscope is that with all these miniseries, there's a lot of number ones. <laughs> so yeah, I mean you get... that, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Because you could so, go back and pick up these number ones. And even if you don't know the what's going on in the whole universe, at least you'll get the you know that particular story of what's going on in that set, that series right there. Absolutely. Which you know, we're just both fans of comics in general. And you know, and that's why our reviews are, are a little different than most, because we both have different things we want, different things we look for that others may not. It's just kind of who we are, so and, that, you know, that's one thing that Cody or AKA Maverick really pointed out to me was that, you know, in my in my eyes, when I first started looking at comics, it was always the writers and the artists. Right. And after we spoke to a colorist in the industry, Ruth Redman, who we did an interview with, uh, Maverick actually opened my eyes up to that. There's a lot more in comics than just the main artist or, you know, the main writer. There's. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into this stuff that makes it what it is. There's colors that make it pop. There's letters that make the speech bubbles come out, come out to life, you know, and there's a whole direction to these things. And it's not just one person that makes it happen. It's a group of people and they have to work together to, to make this final product. It's just really cool to see it all come to formation now that I understand a little bit more about it. 
and that's yeah, you know, that, that's something you know that I didn't know for the longest time. I didn't know what a letter was. I didn't know. I, I thought that was just a writer and an artist. I didn't know what a color was. Was I didn't know what a a letter was. And I, I'm glad to know all this stuff now. I'm glad that I've finally gotten into the point where I'm like, oh, oh man, I I know, I know. There's more to this than just two people, and it shows you how much work goes into a comic, and it just makes it so much more interesting to me that to know that it's not just two people sitting down working on it. That's a lot of hard work and it makes you appreciate every single one that you have. Absolutely. And, you know, um, without further ado, I want to go ahead and end this episode and look forward to more future reviews of Xenoscope and we'll do fireside chat reviews, make it more formal as well once we get an idea down. Um, yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and close out the episode. This is Clowns, one of your hosts. And I'm Maverick. And we're out of here.